President Joe Biden is experiencing a bit of a dilemma currently. He is struggling to decide whether or not he should unilaterally enact objectively good and common sense policies that are also extremely popular. Yeah. So the first thing he's considering doing is canceling up to $50,000 of student debt, which is a pleasant surprise that he's even considering this because previously he said he wouldn't cancel any more than 10,000 and he would only do that if it was passed through the legislature. But seeing as how uh, the filibuster is intact and he's going to listen to everything that the Senate par parliamentarian says, I mean, if he wants to accomplish anything and be even somewhat popular among young people, then you've got to do something. So he is considering student loan debt cancellation. As Adam Minsky of Forbes reports, the Biden administration on Thursday indicated that the president is actively considering whether to enact widespread student loan forgiveness of up to $50,000, but no decision has yet been made. At a Politico playbook event on Thursday, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain indicated that Biden has asked newly appointed Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona to put together a memo outlining potential legal authorities that would allow him to enact broad student loan debt cancellation of up to $50,000. Separately last month, President Biden also directed the Department of Justice to evaluate his authority to enact widespread student loan forgiveness. Now, I will point out that this article was published on April 1st. We're a little bit late to the party, but we'll just keep that in mind. If this is a joke, this is a very, very dirty joke. But as to whether or not he should do this, um, I don't know, let me think. Should he do something that would alleviate an entire generation that's bogged down by debt, largely due to policies that he enacted when he was a senator? Yeah, I think that maybe he should definitely lean in the direction of canceling $50,000. What's the point of even contemplating? Just do it. Donald Trump canceled student debt for veterans. So, I mean, there's already the legal precedent. Do it. Now, another thing that he is considering, um, as CNBC reports, the White House is considering whether to lift intellectual property protections on COVID-19 vaccines, sources say, which would allow other countries to replicate existing vaccines. So, if he were to do this, it would only be temporary. And what would be the benefits of him actually doing this? Well, first of all, it would drastically increase the speed to which other countries would be able to vaccinate their citizens because if you only have a select few number of companies manufacturing this vaccine, it's going to take a little while, right? And given that we're in a pandemic and we're in a race against the mutations and the variants, you might want them to know how to manufacture this vaccine so that way there could be generics. I mean, is this really a time to let Big Pharma profit off of Human health? Now, um, if you're wondering what the downsides are, uh, we'll play that clip from CNBC because they explain the supposed downsides of Joe Biden's administration taking this action. Hey, Brian, I've learned that the White House is studying whether to temporarily suspend patent protections for vaccines and treatments uh, developed to treat COVID-19 in response to specific requests from South Africa and India who have uh, lodged a formal request at the World Trade Organization to get access to these medicines. And so far, the issue has been tabled on a global scale. But now I've learned that it's risen to the highest levels within the Biden administration, according to three sources familiar with the matter. As recently as Monday of this week, a meeting of deputy level policymakers convened to discuss the issue. But I'm told by my sources that no decision was reached, although privately House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, many of the members of her caucus have supported this move behind the scenes, that she has sent a private letter to the White House expressing her own support uh, for pursuing such a move. You can imagine there is fierce debate on either side of this discussion. On one hand, pharmaceutical companies say that that this would compromise medical innovation uh, in the future. On the other hand, you have many developing nations who say uh, that they would like access to these medicines and they argue that wealthier nations are essentially hoarding these medicines that they've developed. Uh, in the words of one source who's familiar with some of the support among progressive lawmakers here in the U.S., they say uh, we're not all safe until everyone is safe. Brian, we should note, I just got a statement in from the office of the U.S. Trade Representative who will have jurisdiction over this issue and who I believe will make the final decision. And it says that they are uh, using every avenue to coordinate with their global partners.
back to you. Okay, so I kind of get the dilemma here. On one hand, we need the pandemic to go away and we need countries to be able to rapidly vaccinate their populations. But on another hand, these pharmaceutical companies who stand to make billions of dollars by being the exclusive manufacturers of the COVID vaccines say that uh, this will compromise medical innovation. Such a dilemma. Sounds like bullshit. Let's go with the first one. Let's compromise medical innovation. Let's go with option A and uh, let's make sure that these countries are able to quickly vaccinate their citizens. I mean, are we talking about a secret sauce recipe from some restaurant? No, we're talking about a life-saving vaccine. What's the dilemma, Joe Biden? Why are you even contemplating this? Why do you even have to think about whether or not this is something that you should do? Of course, this is something that you should do. Are you serious? Let me pose a hypothetical situation to you. What would happen if you successfully vaccinate enough Americans where we reach herd immunity, but other countries in Latin America, in Africa, don't actually vaccinate enough of their citizens, the virus continues to spread there, and a new mutation pops up that's actually resistant to the uh, existing vaccines. And then what happens? All of a sudden, all the effort to vaccinate Americans, it's undone. This is a pandemic. We can't choose to let certain people on this planet get the vaccines while others don't get the vaccines if we actually want to end the pandemic for good. So there's no dilemma. I mean, these are all things that Joe Biden can do that would be extremely, extremely popular. He'd get praise for it. I'd certainly give him credit for it. And on top of that, these are just objectively good things. Why why the back and forth? Why the deliberation? Just fucking do it. I mean, <laughs> this shouldn't be something that you take years agonizing over. Oh my God, should I cancel $50,000 in student debt? Do I have the legal authority to do it? Yes. Just do it. I feel like Shia LaBeouf right now. I mean, just, just fucking do, do it. 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 This isn't an issue when it comes to lifting the... Uh, intellectual property protections for the coronavirus vaccine obviously unless you're stupid i mean not doing that would be counterproductive so i just i don't understand this these would be all phenomenal things i would give joe biden credit for it many leftists would give him credit for this many human beings would give him credit for doing these objectively good popular things so just do it stop thinking stop contemplating and just do it right these things cannot be accomplished legislatively unless you are willing to fight. And since you're not willing to fight, if you want to get anything done and have any chance of keeping the House and keeping the White House in 2024, you've got to deliver at least something to the American people. And you could start with the most popular, easy to accomplish things. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing. You're getting nervous, man. man.